Hi, Algebra students. So this is our instructional video for section 9.5 on solving using the quadratic formula. So the first thing you might notice is I have a split screen up because this particular section is going to require the use of your graphing calculator. And so I'm going to walk you through the steps for that. Um, so, so far in this unit, we've learned several different methods of solving quadratics. Um, when we get to section 9.5, the quadratic formula is something that works for any type of quadratic, um, and it's kind of a fail-proof method. So some of you might just choose to refer to this method all the time, but we're also going to um, ask you, you know, when might you use those other methods as well. It depends on how your problem is set up. So um, the first thing you need to know is what is the quadratic formula, and so that's, that is what we have right here for you um, and you do need to commit this to memory so it's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all of that over 2a um, there's a little video that i have for you in chapter 9 module that has a little song that i hope you remember it goes to the tune of pop goes the weasel so please check that out and take a look at it helps me remember it as well so um, as we walk through these steps, the first thing we're gonna talk about is um, how do we determine the number of solutions, which is helpful. So um, if you look down here, we have this section here that asks, that, that's asking you to look at the number um, underneath the radical there. So when we substitute those values in, if we walk through the example here, the first thing I wanna do is identify my A, B, and C, and I'll walk you through that. So if you look at the value under the radical for this particular one, that is this number right here, the square root of 60. And so I know for this particular problem that because the square root of 60 is a positive number that this problem is gonna have two real solutions. If that number underneath the radical were negative, I know that there's not gonna be any real solutions because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So you're gonna get um, you know, you're, you're not going to find a solution for that. And then if the number under the radical is zero, you're going to get one real solution because you can only, there's only one square root of zero, which is itself. Okay. So, um, also just to cover some vocabulary with you, that number underneath the radical is called the discriminant. So I'd like you to be familiar with that vocabulary. And that just, again, tells you the number of real solutions. OK, so this is a little tight down here, but we're going to start working through these problems. So let's take a look at example A. And the first thing I want you to notice are the directions here. Please notice that it does say solve. So we are going to go all the way to the solution process, even though it is asking me here to identify the number of real roots. So we're gonna look at that underneath the discriminant. So the first thing I like to do, um, as we mentioned up here, always make sure that your problem is in standard form before you get started. So number or example A is. So the first thing I like to do is identify my A, my B, and my C. So A is four, B is three, C is negative one. And then I'm just gonna plug that into my formula. So X equals, negative b. Remember, when we say negative, it also means the opposite of, and then plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. All of that over 2 times your a. So if I simplify this, I get negative 3 plus or minus, and then I usually just work above my radical here. Just use mental math as much as you can. So three squared is nine, four times four is 16. So I'm doing um, nine, sorry, minus, this was a negative four here. I missed my negative as well inside. So four times a, no, that was not negative, sorry. Okay, 
sorry, I had to pause for a minute and look for my mistake. I knew I had one in there. So this four is actually positive, but it was the one that was negative. I forgot to put that negative in there. I knew that wasn't gonna be right to subtract a negative there. So here I'm doing negative 16 times negative one. So that gives me positive 16 which is the square root of 25, and then two times four is eight. So from this point, this is all mental math so far. So I have negative three plus or minus, and then the square root of five is five over eight. Um, I know that this is a positive number, so I'm looking for two real solutions. So when I look for those solutions, three plus five is eight, and then eight over eight. Sorry, just, Let's see, this is a negative. Again, I gotta watch my signs there. Negative three plus five is two, and then two eighths is equal to one fourth. And then you have to do negative three minus five, which is negative eight over eight, and that gives me a negative one. So my two real solutions are one fourth and negative one. So let's go to example B. Um, for this one, the first thing I want to do is put that in standard form. So 3x squared plus 5x minus 7 equals 0. So x. So let's just identify again. A is 3, B is 5, C is negative 7. So x equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times my a times my c, which is negative 7, all of that over 2 times my a. So when I simplify that, again, um, I'm going to, I did this mental math on my own, it's 25, and then I have um, plus 84, so that gives me negative 5, plus or minus the square root of 109 over 6. Okay, so 109 is not a perfect way. This is where I'm going to go to my calculator to help me a little bit. So when I plug this in, the first thing I want to do is make sure that I start with parentheses. So parentheses and then negative 5. Make sure you enter that correctly. And then we're going to do just plus this time. So plus second square root of 109 and then you have to cursor over and then close your parenthesis and then that way putting parentheses around this ensures that all of that is going to be divided by six so then when I enter that that gives me my first answer so the first root and by the way 109 is a perfect number so I know that sorry um, it is a positive number, so I know there are going to be two real roots. So that's my first answer. Now, rather than plug all that back in on the graphing calculator, what I can do is cursor back up. So over here, if I cursor up until this answer is highlighted and then hit enter, it's just going to enter all that again. And then I'm going to just going to use my cursor to scroll back to that addition sign. And once I'm right on top of it, I'm going to change it to subtraction and I'm gonna hit enter again, and it's gonna give me my second answer. Cool, right? So make sure you round correctly. Let's round to the nearest hundredths. So my first solution would be 91 hundredths, and my second solution would be negative two and 57 hundredths. Okay, so we're gonna to go to number three, for example, C. So this one is already in standard form. A is negative 2, B is 8, and C is 5. So X equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. Okay, all of that over 2 times my a. So again, when I simplify that, um, negative a plus or minus, that gives 8 squared is 64, and then negative 4 times negative 2 times negative 5 times negative 40, so 64 minus 40 
gives me 24. So the square root of 24 and then over negative 4. So again, I'm going to go to my graphing calculator for this particular problem. So over here, I'm just going to start a new problem. Don't forget, start, open your parentheses. So we have, um, make sure you click on the negative sign, not the subtraction sign for that 8 or it's not going to work. So negative 8 plus, and then second, x squared, need the square root of 24, scroll over, close parentheses, and I'm dividing all of that by negative 4. And again, make sure you hit the negative button press enter. So there's my first solution. Before I write that down, I'm going to go ahead and calculate my second solution. So just cursor back up until that problem is highlighted. Hit enter. Scroll back over on top of the addition sign. Change it to subtraction. Hit enter again. So very quickly I was able to calculate, and again, as we noticed, uh, the number underneath the radical is positive, so there are two real solutions. The first one rounded correctly to the nearest hundredth is 0 0.78, and the second solution, again, rounded to the nearest hundredth is 3 and 22 hundredths. Okay, so I'm going to go on to this next row. We're going to look at example D. So let's take a look at this one here. Um, you'll notice that the first thing I need to do is set this equal to zero. So I would just add five to both sides. So two x squared plus nine x, then it's gonna say plus 12 equals zero. So a is two, b is nine, c is 12. So x equals negative nine plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times my a, times my c, all of that over 2 times my a. So when I simplify this one, I have x equals negative 9. And then if I simplify inside here, again, notice I'm doing just all of this using mental math. So 9 squared is 81. 4 times 2 is 18. 18 times 12 is 96. So when I do 81 minus 96, I get negative 15 over 4. And you might remember from up top we said that if there's a negative number underneath the radical, that means that there are going to be no solutions. So that one is just no solution because there are not going to be any real roots to that. If you plug that into your calculator, which you may want to do, you'll see that you just get an error for that one. Okay. That's it, let's move on to example E. So again, um, this one we need to set equal to zero as well. So we have four X squared minus four X plus one equals zero. That's our first step. So X equals, so when I say um, negative B, the opposite of negative four is four plus or minus the square root. Now when B is negative, you're squaring that negative. So B squared minus four times your a, times your c, all of that over 2 times your a term. So when you simplify all of that, so 4 squared, negative 4 squared is 16, and then you have um, 16 here as well. So you get 4 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. So remember we said when you have 0 underneath the radical, this time there's just going to be one real root. And again, you should be able to do this one in your head. So square root of zero is just zero. So it's just four plus zero, which is four. So your answer is four eighths, which simplifies to one half. Or of course, if you were putting that in decimal form, that would be 0.5. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave you with this last one. I'm going to give you the solution for this one, and then I'm going to encourage you to try this one on your own because I'm going to run out of time on my video, but I think you've had enough instructional time. So for this last one, you should get 4.62 and 1.78. Okay, so I hope that this video has been helpful for you. I hope that you understand how to use the graphing calculator. Um, Please don't hesitate to ask questions when you need to.
All right, so I decided in my last few seconds, I'll walk you through this one really quickly just so you can check your work if you already did it. So um, this one set equal to zero and then plug it into your formula. When you um, simplify underneath the radical, you get 144 minus 120, which is 